Hello everyone. So this week we're going to be artists. We're going to learn how to sketch the graph of complicated function using all the tools of, uh, from calculus that we've learned so far. So what I'll do in this first video is work through an example carefully and then in the next video I'll summarize the steps for graphing functions in general. Alright, so the idea is always to, uh, if you're given a function f of x, is to study the properties of the function using the function itself and its derivatives f prime and f prime prime. And more precisely, what you're generally interested in is finding the regions or the intervals where the, the function and its derivatives are positive or negative. This is what will tell you all the information you need to graph the function. So let's start by looking at f of x and then we'll move on to its derivatives afterwards. So what kind of information can you get by just looking at the function itself? Well, there's a number of things. So the first thing you should figure out right away is what is the domain of the function. So this is just the values of x for which the function is defined. So that's the first thing you should look at, and that's pretty easy to find. Now, the next thing, which is the most important part, is to uh, find out the regions or the intervals where the function is either positive, so above the x-axis, or negative, below the x-axis. Now, where can it actually change sign? Well, by the intermediate value theorem, we know that if the function is continuous and it's changing sign, then it must go through zero. So one place where it can change signs is at the intercepts or wherever the function intersects the x-axis. But it can also change signs wherever the function is not continuous. So if you have vertical asymptotes or jumps, things like that. All right, so what you want to do is find all the intercepts and the discontinuities of your function and then determine whether the function is positive or negative on each interval between these points. Now there's more information you can get from the function itself, so you can ask whether it's symmetric, so even or odd, or whether it's periodic if it involves things like trig functions. Uh, that's extra information, and you can also ask whether the function has asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are uh, wherever the limit on either side goes to plus or minus infinity, but you could also study horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes, so we'll come back to that in the third video this week. Okay, so let's work out an example. Suppose that I ask you to graph the function x squared plus 2 over x. So let's do it step by step. So we'll study the properties of the function first. So the domain of this function, well, function here is well defined for any real x except where this term blows up here. So that's at x equals to zero. So the domain will be x being a real number, but x not being equal to zero, right? Because there it has a discontinuity. Okay, great. Now uh, we could find the intercepts. So we know the point of discontinuity is x equals to zero, we can find the intercepts. This is wherever the function intersects the x-axis, so whether, wherever the value of the function is zero. So we want to solve f of x equals to zero equals to x squared plus two over x. Well, this is the same thing as setting x squared equals minus two over x, sorry, square equals minus two over x, which is the same thing as setting x cubed equals minus two, the same thing as getting x being the square root, the cubic root, sorry, of minus 2. So there's a single intercept. Cubic root of minus 2 is something like minus 1.26, I think. So it's somewhere in here. There's a point here where the function will intersect uh, the x-axis. All right, so that's one thing we know. Then we could ask uh, more stuff. So we can ask whether it has asymptotes here. So I'm not going to worry about vert uh, horizontal and slant asymptotes for now. In fact, this function doesn't have any of those. But it does have a vertical asymptote. So at the point x equals to 0, well, it is easy to see that if I take the limit from the positive side at x goes to 0, well, this becomes very, very big. This becomes very, very small. Sorry, it goes to 0. But this 2 over x becomes very big and positive. So this goes to infinity, while the left-sided limit here of my function. So this still goes to 0. Now 2 over x, x is very small and negative. This goes to minus infinity. All right, so what I have here is a vertical asymptote at x equals to 0. And then if I approach from the right-sided limit, I know it blows up to infinity. And from the left side, it blows up to minus infinity. So I can draw these little lines. So what the little lines here mean just is just the behavior of the function as I get close to the vertical asymptote x equals to 0. All right, you could also ask whether this function is even or odd, so whether f of x, f of minus x is equal to plus or minus f of x. In this case, it's neither odd or even, so it's no nice symmetry, and it's also not periodic, so we cannot get anything more from here. Okay, the last thing we want to study uh, for the function itself is the regions or the intervals where it's positive or negative. So I find it very useful to have a little table. 
So we'll do the same thing for f, f prime, and f prime prime, where I split into different regions or different intervals here. So I know that the function can only change time at its intercepts or where it's discontinuous. So here there's only two such points. There's cubic root of minus 2, which is an intercept, and then x equals to 0, which is a discontinuity. And then I can split into regions, so this can, will be x less than square root, uh, cubic root of minus 2. This would be x being between cubic root of minus 2 and 0. This would be x greater than 0. And then I have my f of x here, and I want to find the sine of my function in each of these regions. Well, at 0 here it's undefined, and at the cubic root here I know it's 0. Now between these, well, first, let's look at this case. So if x is very large but negative, what is the, uh, the, the sign of the function? Two ways you can figure this out. You could just plug in a number, take a very large negative number, say minus 100, plug it in here, and you see what you get. Or you can just analyze it by thinking about it. If you take a very, very large negative number, this becomes a very, very large positive number, and this becomes very small, so it's negligible. So the whole thing will become very large and positive. So this will be positive. <laughs> Now, if I look at the region here where x is still negative but between 0 and the cubic root of minus 2, so let's look, for example, at a very small negative number. This will become very small positive, but this will become huge negative, right? I'll be in this region. So clearly, this will be negative. So the sign of my function here, this is positive, this is negative. And if x is positive, then the whole thing's positive, so the sign is positive. So I know that I can write on my graph now, I can say that here, for x being very uh, large negative, the function must be positive, so it cannot be in this region. It also cannot be in this region here, because it must be negative over this interval. And for the positive side, it cannot be in this region. All right, so that's all the information I can get from the function itself. <clears throat> now we want to look at its derivatives and extract further information to be able to fill in uh, the details of the function here. Okay, so let's look at this first derivative. So what we're really interested in here, and the same thing for the second derivative, is to figure out the intervals where the first derivative is positive or negative. So where can it change signs? Well, just as for f of x, f prime of x can change signs at two different points, either where f prime of x intersects the x-axis, so where it's zero, or where it does not exist, so discontinuities of f prime of x. So these are, remember from the previous week, these points where either f of, f prime of x is 0 or f prime does not exist are actually critical numbers of your function. So what you want to do is determine these points and then figure out whether f prime is positive or negative on each interval between these points. Now what does this imply for the function itself? Well, if f prime of x is positive, what this is saying is that the slope of the function is positive, right? So if the slope of the function, uh, the slope of the tangent line, sorry, is positive, so it, it means it's something like that. So what that means is that for the function here must be like this, right? For the slope to be positive. So it really, if you think about it for a little while, you can convince yourself that whenever the slope is positive, what that means for the function itself is that the function is increasing. And if the slope is negative, so if the slope of the tangent line is negative, so you get a tangent line something like that, then your function will be whatever, something like this. So that means the function is actually decreasing. So the output of the function is decreasing. So whenever f prime of x is greater than 0, the function is increasing. When it's less than 0, the function is decreasing. So that tells us a lot about the function itself. Okay, so let's go back to our function here and try to figure out what we uh, can get from the derivative, the first derivative. So we first want to calculate the first derivative. So f prime of x here pretty easy to calculate, it's going to be 2x minus 2 over x squared. And now we want to find the regions, the intervals where this is positive or negative. So we want to find the points where uh, this is either 0, the derivative is 0, or it does not exist. So first we know that f prime of x, the only point where it does not exist is at x equals to 0, and that's because x, well, this thing blows up, but x equals 0, uh, x equals to 0 was actually a discontinuity of the function itself, so it's surely not uh, differentiable at this point. Okay, now what about the zeros? So f prime of x is equal to 0 if 2x minus 2 over x squared is equal to 0. So this is the same as saying that 2x is equal to 2 over x squared. Sorry, that should be a square. 
So it's the same as saying that x cubed is equal to 1. So it's the same as saying that x is equal to 1. So there's a single point where f prime of x is 0, which is at x equals to 1. So at x equals to 1, the value of the function is actually 3. So we know that there's going to be something special occurring at this point, 1, 3. Okay, so what's going on at this point? So let's do a little table, just as we did before, but now for the derivative function. So I have two lines here, so I'm still splitting into regions according to the points where f prime can change signs. So I have my f prime of x here, and I'll put an f of x here. So what I, I want to figure out is the regions where f prime is positive or negative, and then I'll write down what it implies from the function f of x. So first I need to split that into different intervals. So the only points where things can change, the sign of f prime can change is at the discontinuity, x equals to 0. So this is the point where the derivative does not exist, and at x equals to 1. So now I have different intervals from my previous table. And I need to figure out, a sign, figure out the sign of f prime on each of these intervals. Now if, if x is negative, then pick any negative number. f prime will be something negative minus something uh, positive. So the whole thing is negative, so I get negative sign here. If x equals to 0, derivative does not exist. x equals to 1, it's 0. At x between 0 and 1, so x is now positive, but small. So if I take a small positive number, this is small, this is big, and there's a minus sign, so this will still be negative. And if x is greater than 1, then I can take x to be very, very large. For example, this will be very large, this will be small, so the whole thing will be positive. Okay, okay. and then we know that if the derivative is negative, that means the function is decreasing. Here the function is still decreasing, here the function is increasing. Just looking at that, you can see if your function is decreasing and then increasing, this means that this is a local minimum. Yeah. Okay, so what we know now is that this will be a local minimum, so I'll get something like this here. That's not very well drawn. Something like this for my function, but I, I don't know the whole thing, so I'll, 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 I'll wait until I figure out the details. And here I just know that it's decreasing the whole way, so I'll get something like that. But now I, I, I cannot really draw this because there's different things that could happen. Right? I could have something like this, for example, or I could have this. Right? Which one is the right function? I still don't know. To figure this out, I need to have uh, to study the second derivative of f. So let me remove these things here. Just keep it like that but I still don't know exactly what it looks like, so I'll study the second derivative and figure out what uh, should be the precise details of the function. here. All right, so what kind of information can I get from the second derivative? So again, we want to figure out where f prime prime is positive and negative. It can change signs wherever it's zero, or it does not exist, just as before, so what you want to do is determine where it does not exist and where it's zero, and, and figure out the sign on these intervals. And now you want to figure out what it implies for f of x. Now this is a little more subtle, but if f prime prime of x is greater than zero, so what this is saying is that uh, the rate of change of f prime is positive, right? So in other words, f prime itself is increasing. This is the same. So if f prime prime is greater than zero, that implies that f prime is increasing. So in other words, the slope of the tangent line is increasing. So you could have something like this. Then the slope is negative, becoming less and less neg negative, becomes positive, and then it keeps increasing. So what does it imply for the function? That is something like this. Right. So this is something we call concave up. Right. So whenever the second derivative is positive, then the function is concave up because the slope or the, the derivative f prime is increasing. On the other hand, if f prime prime is less than zero, then the f prime is decreasing. So that means that you get something like this, where the slope decreases, and you get that your function is actually concave down. Now, there's a very easy way of remembering that, which I like, and it's the following idea. So if f prime prime is positive, that's positive, right? So you're going to be happy. So if you're happy, then you'll be smiling. So that's a smile. And if f prime prime is negative, well, negative is bad, you're not happy. So then you're unhappy, right? So you just put a little uh, 
smile here. So if, if, if it's positive, then you're smiling. If it's negative, then you're unhappy, so you're not smiling. And that gives you the different uh, concavity here. And in fact, you can also use that to remember for f prime. If f prime is positive, then f increases. So you could say it increases happiness because you're more and more happy. And if f prime is negative, then it decreases happiness. So that would be another way of remembering the whole thing. So whenever it's positive, you're happy, so it increases happiness and you smile. And if it's negative, then it decreases happiness and you're unhappy. Anyway, that's just a little trick that I liked to remember, but it's important you understand why this is true in the picture. Okay, so let's go back to our function. So now we have our function. We calculate it as derivative. We can calculate the second derivative. This will be 2 plus 4 over x cubed if I didn't make a mistake. All right, so now we want to find, well, of course, we know that f prime prime does not exist only at one point, which is, again, x equals to 0, which was the discontinuity of f. And now we want to find the zeros of f prime prime. So f prime prime will be equal to 0 if 2 plus 4 over x cubed is 0, which is the same as saying that 2 is equal to minus 4 over x cubed, which is the same as saying that x cubed is equal to minus 2, which ends up being that x is equal to square root, uh, cubic root of minus 2, which is the same point that we had here. So this is a special point for f. It's an intercept for f, but it's also a point where the second derivative is 0. Okay, so that's great. Uh, now what we want to do is do the same thing as before, draw a little table. And now for f prime prime, split into regions, add two lines here, so one line for f prime prime and one line for what it implies for f. And then we want to split into a different region. So now there's special point at a cubic root of minus 2, special point at 0, and then you have the regions in between. Sorry, my writing is not very good. And then you want to figure out the sign of f prime prime in each of these regions. So here this is 0. This does not exist. If x is large and negative, if you look at f prime prime, well, if x is large and negative, this term here will be very, very small, so it will be irrelevant, so the whole thing will be positive. If x, however, is negative but between uh, 0 and, and cubic root of minus 2, so let's take x to be very, very small and negative. So it's very small and negative. This becomes a dominant term, and because of the cube here, it's negative, so the whole thing will be negative. And if x is positive, well, the whole thing is clearly positive. So what does it imply for the function? It's positive, so I'm smiling. Negative, unhappy, positive, smiling. That's what it implies from the function. Now, in fact, a point here, like here, uh, where the function is continuous and it changes sign, that f prime prime changes sign, so concavity changes. This is called an inflection point. So we'll talk more about that in the next video. But now I can finish the graph of the, my function. So I know that uh, on, on the, for the positive side here, it's going to be concave up the whole way. And I figured out last time that this was a minimum, so I can draw my function as looking like this. Now here, on the negative side, I know what it looks like now. I know that on the left side here, this is going to be concave up, while on the right side is going to be concave down, so I should get something. And this is the final sketch of the graph of the function, and you can check on Wolfram Alpha that this is what it looks like, and that should be precisely the graph of the function. All right, so that was a, a long example. So graphing function is pretty long. So what we'll do in the next video is just summarize the steps. And then on the third video, I'll study uh, horizontal and slant asymptotes in a little more detail.